Have you seen that most longboards don't have enough range? 80 boards have good range but are too heavy and expensive. Wonder what's the solution? Hey guys, Gabby here and today I'll be reviewing the Mipo Voyager X. This is possible, the best longboard ever made by offering outstanding range and power. First, let's do a quick unboxing. As soon as we open it, we can see the board wrapped in plastic for some reason. And this looks pretty nice, more on that later. We also have an instruction manual, extra pulleys and the remote control. We have a card with a guide for the different pulleys wheel combination. The classic T tool from Mipo, a couple of spare belts, and the 4.5 amp big charger. There is also a cable to charge your remote. Mipo have really matured with the design of their boards. No more huge annoying logos and arrows. Now all graphics are made carefully composed while maintaining their classic black and orange colors. The deck made us a combination of bamboo and fiberglass and 38 inches long which is pretty standard for a longboard. There is a bit of a concave that gently curves towards the sides that gives this board good feedback for your feet and helps with carving and turning. There is a bit of flexibility that will help going over bad terrain while at the same time being very stable especially when riding at high speed. It weighs 11 kilograms. That's about 25% more than your everyday average longboard. But honestly, I can barely feel the difference. Because the motors are facing forward, you can stand on the tail to pick it up like you could with most longboards. Pull from the front tracks like carrying a suitcase or just pick it up from the ground with a hand. So overall, I would say it's way better than any 80 board when it comes to transportation and very similar to most other longboards. I haven't had any issue with that, especially because Michael often carried the board for me. But both Michael and I are pretty big guys at 5'9 and 5'10 respectively. So I wonder how does a much smaller rider can handle this board? I'm here with Vicky, she's just 5 foot 2, a bit shy of 100 pounds and by far the cutest rider in this city. Hey Vicky! Hello, hi! So okay, first thing you're gonna try is, can you try to uh, step on the tail to bring the board up? Let's see if that works. Okay. <laughs> not a chance, no. not a chance, you are too light. Okay, see if you can pick it up, can you pick it up? Is it too heavy? Can you handle it? Uh, it's okay. It's okay, right? Yeah. Okay, okay. Okay, you can put it down. So, do you think you can carry this board every day, anywhere you go? Yeah, sure. My car, quick. Besides being a bit heavier than other longboards, the deck dimensions are pretty standard. So, it takes about the same space in the boot of your car as any other longboard. This is one of the highlights on this board. It's insanely powerful. Most power that the average rider will ever need. With dual 2700 watts motors, capable of 60 kilometers per hour, and hill climb of 46% incline. That is actually the only Lombo that I ride most of the time. Almost exclusively in third gear. Actually, their gear is already faster than most other longboards at their highest gear or turbo. And that opened new opportunities, like flying over the steepest hills or using bigger wheels. Talking about the wheels, this came with PU 90mm 70A8 durometer orange wheels that are one of the best stock wheels I ever tested. I believe this is inspired 
Inspired by the boosted 90mm wheels. These wheels are very grippy, unpredictable, and decent over bad roads. But considering that I can put any wheels I want in this board, I tested quite a few wheels. First choice of wheels I went with is Cali Rides PU 105mm. These wheels are a small improvement over the 90mm stock wheels. I still ride mostly in third gear except when climbing big hills. Then I tested the Cloud wheels 105 and 120mm. Both these wheels are more comfortable going over bad roads than the PU wheels. With the 150mm I don't feel much of a change in power like I did with the 120mm wheels. With the bigger cloud wheels I felt the need to move up to 4 gear to match the power of the third gear with 90mm wheels. Also range was affected and the center of gravity was a bit higher which I didn't like at all. I also tested a couple of rubber wheels. First, the Eovan 105mm. These were a bit more comfortable than the Cloud Wheels 105 and 120, but to be honest, not much of a difference. But they offer really good grip, especially on wet roads. I was mostly using this on third gear, so it didn't have a great effect on power. The con on these wheels is that they're considerably heavier, making this board as heavy as an 80 board, or at least close enough. Last but not least, I tested the Mipo own Cyclone 110mm rubber wheels. These are hands down the most comfortable road wheels I ever tested on a longboard. It's the closest you can get to pneumatic tires on 80 boards. Same as the Eoban, they offer great grip even on wet roads, but with a better contact patch and being softer, they handle bad roads with ease. I rode on this mostly on 4 gear. Quick disclaimer here, these wheels don't come included with the Voyager. If the area where you live have bad roads or is often rainy, I highly recommend spending a bit more to get these wheels. The tracks are forged reverse kimping tracks with 95A pushings that felt very stable especially at high speed. The pushings design have a small ring on the inside similar to a step in barrel pushing. That is for added stability, but the tanning ratio has been affected by it. I watch other reviewers on YouTube complaining about this pushings configuration. I personally like them and that's probably because of my weight and size. Basically, the bigger you are, the better you feel with harder pushings and will also make you feel more confident while carving since they're more stable. If you're a lighter rider, you can just change pushings. I tested the Vino 95A and Zombie 92A. You can get even softer pushing according to your weight or riding style. Mipo have refined the Lean E ESE to the point that it's one of the best in the market, but in the Voyager it feels particularly responsive. After all, this is a high performance board. I noted that if you ride in lower gears it's a bit smoother, so if you are a beginner you might consider a start in second gear and work your way up to fourth gear. The M5S remote it literally looks like a toy that came out of a cereal box. It's really small, which is great when you put it in your pocket, but not so great when you ride with winter gloves. There is a small screen with all the basic information like speed and distance. You can easily change gears as well as braking power and switch into reverse mode. There is motor detection, so you don't need to bend down to turn around. The reason this is bright orange is so you can find it easily. It actually kind of makes sense. The battery on this board is very, very generous. I believe it's the biggest battery on any production longboard to date. 12S3P with 518 watt hour capacity. This is the kind of battery you can only see on 80 boards. I'm 88 kilos and 5 foot 10. I did three range tests. First with PU 90mm wheels, 
riding mostly in third gear in the city in winter and managed to get 47 kilometers. Then I tested the range with cyclone wheels, riding mostly in four gear and I got 36 kilometers. For the third test, I wanted to see how it would perform with a lighter rider, so I let Vicky see how far she can go. She was riding on third gear with cyclone wheels and she got 50 kilometers. So you can see how much of a difference the rider weight can make. Another thing that I noticed watching other YouTubers reviews on this board is that the charger will overheat. I got this board after the second batch, so I didn't experience any of that. My charger is 4.5 amp, which is above average, even when compared with 80 board chargers and works perfectly fine. It can fully charge the board from 0 to 100% in 3 hours. Considering how big is the battery, that's not bad at all. This is one of my favorite boards, period. It comes very highly recommended. I leave a link with a discount in the comment section down below. Don't forget to thumbs up this video and subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. Alright, that's it. Adios amigos!